Hi everyone, today I'm gonna show you how to run AI, specifically large language models relying only on the power of the sun, literally without any external power supplies. Stay tuned. The system is running, I've already asked it what's the capital city of England, of course London is correct answer. Right now the system consists only of Raspberry Pi, the cable and the photovoltaic cell, with 5 volts regulation circuit, there is no any hidden batteries, plugs and so on, just pure sun power. You will also learn some electronic basics. The brain of the system will be this guy, Raspberry 2 Zero W. It has 512 megabytes of RAM, so it's quite hard to fit reasonable LLM here, but we will do it. Anyway, instead of AI models, you can use it for web server, home assistant hub, robotics and so on. The heart of the system, 6 watts solar module. It's not the smallest one, but I think it's quite portable. But let's stop for a moment. You can say that sun power is available for free for everyone. However, in practice, it has a lot of limitations. First one, depends on your location. For example, in the middle of Sahara Desert, you can harvest more energy than in the cloudy Eastern Europe. Second one, it's not continuous. In the night, sun doesn't shine, so you always need some backup energy. Also on cloudy days, the power is much weaker. Third one, efficiency of photovoltaic panels depends on their type and manufacturer, but roughly it's 50-20%, so around 80% is wasted while converting. Fun fact, there is a research going on and three years ago there was created cell with efficiency over 47%, but it was in the lab environment, anyway, it seems quite promising. Photovoltaic cells slash solars, I use these terms interchangeably. I know that solar thermal cells are completely different things, but for the simplicity of this video, let's skip that. Fourth one, solar modules are quite expensive. I paid $15 for this small basic one. For this price, I could pay for electricity for my projects for months. So far, it seems not promising, but it has two huge advantages. It allows you to autonomously run your model where there is no power grid available, literally in the middle of nowhere. It's an alternative to building a power grid to some remote places. So if you see some remote parkometer, photo radar, vending machine, there is a big chance they have solar module on the roof. Second, as a customer, mostly we are not aware how electricity is produced, but literally in every other way. For example, nuclear, coal and everything between, there are always huge turbines spinning power by deadly flow of the hot steam. There is a mess. Solar energy is an exception. Chill solar panel is laying on the ground, not producing steam, noise or nuclear waste. And creates direct current, DC, opposite to turbines which create alternating current, AC, so you don't need to rectify it to charge your phone, for example. It works like just plug and play. You'll see in a moment. It's cool. Let's go back to AI part. After testing and basic calculations, I know my Raspberry can handle model with around 100 millions of parameters. So I choose a small LLM2, 135 million version with 8-bit quantization. If you are not familiar what quantization is, I've already explained it in this video. I've booted the Raspberry with headless operating system. I can easily connect it wirelessly to my MacBook via SSH. To run the model I am using Olama, it provides a lot of models out of the box, but you can also easily load your custom model, in my case from Huggins Face. Next I have to estimate how much power I need. Power is measured in watts, in DC world watts is just voltage times current. This Raspberry is very energy efficient and under stress load consumes around 0.5 amps at 5 volts, so we need 2.5 watts. I bought this 6 watts panel to make sure that it's enough after uh, subtracting conversion losses. The panel already has built-in 5 volt stabilization and USB hub, so it should work out of the box. Let's test it. This model is tiny, so I'm asking it only very, very basic, simple questions. But the speed and the answers itself are quite good. Looks cool, but this approach is very silly, because every time one cloud puts shade on our cell, or someone cover the panel for one second, system will shut down. We have to somehow integrate small battery in the circuit to be our backup. I chose single LiPo cell, I have small one and a big one, and I'm gonna connect it with $10 DF Robot Sun Power Manager. This version 1.1 has discharge and overcharge battery protection. LiPo batteries have normal voltage 3.7 volts and can safely operate between 3 and 4.2 volts. Charging leap over this level can damage your cell or even damage your apartment. I mean, fire up, so be careful. 
Uh, but as I said, this board will take care of that. Uh, moreover, it has a bunch of LEDs which helps you to uh, get to know what is going under the hood. For example, if battery is fully charged or you connected your battery reversed or your solar reversed and also supports MPPT, maximum power point tracking. Because uh, not always biggest voltage means biggest power output and major principle of MPPT is to extract the maximum available power by choosing the most efficient voltage. In simple terms, it increases energy harvest from solar by roughly 5-30%. Okay, let's connect it. The physical setup is super easy. I've connected battery and panel to the inputs and raspberry via USB cable to the output. As you can see, the Raspberry is booting. There is also indication that the battery is charging. So everything works as expected. Let's talk about numbers. On sunny days, the panel delivers around 300 milliamps. I believe I can increase it to 350 milliamps with proper angles and by removing built-in 5 volt stabilization. But for this project, 300 is more than enough. When Raspberry is running and do nothing, it drains 150 milliamps. When it's answering questions, it drains 600 milliamps. So in theory, for 10 hours on sunny day, we can harvest 3000 milliampere hours. Minus conversion losses, that's enough energy for 4-5 hours of continuous generation for our model. Keep in mind, small LLM can't answer any complex questions often hallucinates and it's useless assistant. But with couple more optimizations and slightly bigger panel, you can try to power bigger Raspberry and try to run, for example, small DeepSeek. Let me know if you would like to see that. I hope you get the basic idea how to simply power your electronics projects uh, with the sun. That's it for today. Let me know what do you think about uh, solar modules in general. Uh, thanks for watching, subscribe for more and hopefully see you soon.